Hello and welcome to another Morales Minute. These are quick tips and sage advice to level up your Web3 game development. Hi, my name's Sam. I'm a Unity certified developer at Morales. I have over 20 years of game dev experience and more than 10 years experience as a digital nomad. I love spending time in nature and practicing sports, as well as drawing, painting, and making music. Together, we'll learn more about Web3 Gaming. Web3 Gaming technology, including decentralization, immutability, and transparency, enables new player experiences. Learn lessons from popular Web3 gameplay design to inspire your game development. Learn more about the Morales Web3 Unity SDK by clicking the link above. Click here to learn about the benefits of Web3 in gaming. And click here to learn more about designing for Web3 Gaming. Getting started. Now, as you start playing more Web3 games, one of the unique aspects of playing them is Web3 wallets. These wallets are an important piece to help you authenticate, to sign important transactions during gameplay, as well as holding your NFTs and currency that may go along with the game. One of the standards that you see out there is Wallet Connect. Many of the different branded Web3 wallets use Wallet Connect technology. This is just an easy open standard for developers to develop for and for these Web3 wallets to connect with. And you can see on the right MetaMask, which was one of the popular examples. The process of getting started in a particular game using the wallet depends, but most of them follow a flow something like setting up the wallet then maybe funding the wallet if the game needs currency to get started. Then you'd start the game, authenticate using the wallet, and then periodically throughout the life of that game, you'll need to sign certain key transactions, things that are on-chain and immutable. To get started with Decentraland, you can either create an account or play as a guest. But to enjoy all the features of the game, I suggest to create an account. Now in my first playthrough with Decentraland, I tried it out in the browser. You get the full experience there, but later I downloaded and played the Windows client and I found that the graphics were better and it was more responsive with my input. Now let's learn more about the tokens in Decentraland. Hey everyone, I'm Tom Iannone, Head of Sales and Customer Success at Morales. So in terms of main tokens, the really the core part of the game is the land token. So this gives you rights to a specific plot of land on the map. You can build whatever you want on that piece of land so other players can come and explore it. They can play your mini game. They can see your NFT gallery, whatever you'd like to build. If you have adjacent plots of land, you can then convert those into an estate. So that will give you a different kind of token, which is the estate token. This is very similar, but it allows you to build larger structures so you have a little bit more freedom in terms of what you're building with your experience. Probably the most popular part of the game is the mana token. That's really the uh, in-game currency, and it's also actually the governance token. So it, it does give you voting rights to help steer the roadmap, vote on new features and other community decisions. Next, let's take a look at the Decentraland trailer. Now that we've seen how to get started with the game, let's look at the Decentraland overview. On my first playthrough session, as soon as I got into the game and logged in, 
I was offered the chance to create my own avatar. I played around here, and there's lots of options. After submitting my character design, I was brought to a tutorial world, one where there's a bunch of other characters, and then it stepped me through how to use the camera controls and the keyboard movement. Now, it looks like the core of the gameplay is wandering around through the world. There's lots of social opportunities because there's other real-world characters where you can text chat with and voice chat with, depending on your settings. Some of the core areas of the gameplay are to explore different areas in the 3D world, to look at the backpack, which is the inventory of all the items you have and you want to collect, looking at the map view, which is another way to explore the world, and then there's lots of settings that you can set for the graphics, the gameplay, how the sound works, etc. Now, when in a 3D world, you walk around using the arrow keys and the mouse to look, etc., but to jump between worlds, there's this teleport screen that just gives you a moment while the screen loads, and then you're automatically in the other part of the world. This allows for much faster navigation, because the world is quite big. Now that we've seen how to get started, let's look at Decentraland's design. Let's take a step back and look at Web3 game design. So traditionally, you address the needs of particular players and player types. You'll know that people coming to your game may be interested in different aspects of the gameplay. You want to consider each of them. Now, with Web3, the opportunities are so rich for someone coming to your experience, they may not even fit the traditional player type, who's there mostly for the fun of it. You also have earners, who are there to play, perhaps for the financial benefits of it, more than the gameplay itself. And then you have the investor type, who may never even open up the game at all. They would either invest through the NFT space, the currency space, or they could even fund earners and players who are in there doing the day-to-day -day experience of the gameplay itself. Now, a traditional game steps through a loop of gameplay, action, reward, and expansion. Let's think about the classic game Pac-Man. As Pac-Man moves through the maze, the actions here are to turn the character through the maze. The rewards are the pellets that the character collects, and for expansion, there's power pellets, special pickups that he can get, that will change his abilities, temporarily giving him invulnerability, or he can chase the enemies. Now with Web3, we have a critical change here. Each time your character is rewarded, you're able to interact with the blockchain. Now this depends dramatically on the game itself, but some things you might be able to do after getting a reward of currency or NFTs or other assets, you could buy and sell those on the open market. You could perhaps stake them for increased income. And then there's governance opportunities as well. Here are the high-level details of this game. Let's ask Tom to help us out with some more details here. Hey, it's me again. So as we discussed earlier, Decentraland is essentially a open world map for you to explore other player-created experiences. You can socialize, go to concerts, and trade in their in-game marketplace. The game mechanics are pretty difficult to define because you can pretty much do anything that you want in the game. So in terms of these actions that are being uh, taken to generate more mana, you can do anything you want. You can have an NFT gallery on your plot of land. You can create your own game. You can even trade in-game names, which are essentially usernames, uh, but they're NFTs. So you can trade those on the marketplace. And you can rent out your land to other players to generate some passive income. Now that we're inspired by that game, let's look at how Morales Web3 Unity SDK could help us in development. If we look at the generations of the web, we're departing Web 2 and enjoying more and more Web 3 experiences. Now, it's not a perfect analogy, but let's look at the generations in games. With middleware technology like Morales and Unity Game Engine, we're able to create Web 3 experiences with features for our players that have never been possible before. Morales provides a single workflow for building high-performance dApps. It's compatible with all your favorite Web 3 tools and services. Now, Unity is one of the most popular game engines out there, and the Morales Web3 Unity SDK brings the power of Morales into your Unity projects. So what does every dApp and Web3 game need? Well, it needs to authenticate users, send and fetch assets, interact with contracts, and observe real-time events from those contracts. Morales does all this and more. To authenticate users with Morales, you use the authentication kit prefab. Drag that into your scene and your authentication is handled. To send assets with Morales, we can use execute contract function, for example, to mint an NFT. And to fetch assets from the blockchain, Morales offers many options, including get NFTs and get NFT owners. To interact with contracts, Morales offers run contract function for read operations and execute contract function for read and write operations. 
And to watch for real-time events, Morales is fully compatible with your favorite Web3 tools and services. You can connect Morales to your favorite backend and receive live events in real time, the ones that your game needs. Now that we've been inspired by that game design and seen how Morales empowers game development, what will you build next? Level up your Web3 development skills by building weekend projects. Sign up at morales.io slash projects. Visit docs.morales.io to download and get started. Thanks.